Hello, everyone. Welcome to GMBA Universe. And I'm Kevin from GMBA Class 2024. And this is Melody from GMBA Class 2023. And we have Professor Khan here with us, too. And today we have a very special guest. She is one of our great GMBA alumnus, uh, Lucia Leon. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. <laughs> and Lucia Leon is currently the Vice President of Cicadex. And uh, Lucia, could you please uh, kindly give us a short introduction of yourself? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, um, very nice uh, to be here with all of you. Thanks so much for the invitation. It's a great honor to be here talking with Professor Khan and you new students. Um, I'm very happy to share uh, my experience in GMBA because it was one of the greatest time in, in my life. I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot and made amazing friends that has lasted uh, uh, more than a decade now. <laughs> Um, well, I am from Costa Rica. I studied um, industrial engineering here in, in Costa Rica. And then I worked uh, some years, maybe six, seven years. And then I went to Taiwan to do the GMBA. After that, I came back to Costa Rica and started working on the banking industry. And then some years later, I moved to my family's company and I am currently working here since, I think, seven years now. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction. We can't wait to hear your sharing and to learn more from uh, your GMBN and work experience. We have prepared several questions. And first, first question we want to ask is, uh, what does a day in your job look like? Most of my day goes in meetings, solving problems. I think the the last years uh, that I have been working here, it's mostly uh, solve uh, issues, talk to providers. Uh, we've had so many so many problems since. 2020 mm. so we, we had to do a lot of changes in our company to keep up with the with the business during the the pandemic and then um also after the pandemic all these uh problems with supply all over the world it uh, it became a very challenging last three years now so basically, my days are problem solving most of the day. Uh, okay. Uh, thank. Thanks for the sharing. And um, the second question is: oh, I, I may need like you to like think back like ten years earlier. Like, what's the the uh, reason that for you to choose to do the MBA program in Taiwan? Well, I. At the beginning, I I was I, I always wanted to do uh, an MBA because my my focus was engineering, mm -hmm. and then I thought I I wanted to do a business after some years of work experience. Uh, then I wanted to go to Taiwan, and I found uh, this this program. I must say what I what I, what really really got me interested in this program was that it was global that i was going to be able to meet not only taiwanese people but people from all over the world and i think that's what makes this program very interesting because in real life in business you need to learn all these skills to deal with different types of personalities different types of culture and this program was like a very good platform to start practicing uh, all this that you studied, but 
you also practice it in real life. So, like, can I say what you learn and acquire from the GMBA like program, like help you to like build up the skill you have in the workplace right now? Yes, because in now that I am working in my own company and doing business, you need to be very clear about the numbers, about the accounting, the finance, the everything. But what keeps a business going for a long time is relationships. The relationships that you have with your providers, with your clients. And in a globalized world like now, uh, we're not centered in Costa Rica. We, we supply from all over the world and we're expanding our company to other countries. So it's very important be able to cope with different different cultures and respect and learn from every person you meet that i think was the great opportunity we had we had in, in our program mm -hmm. yes true also also i i really liked the opportunity to do the internship in taiwan really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why <laughs> I think it was very interesting. And then I, I had the opportunity to keep working the, the second year because the internship was one month, mm -hmm. but I got to stay in the workplace in Taiwan for one more year. And I think that was very interesting. Also, when I came back and I went to, to work for Citibank, it was one of the main reasons they hired me. They really liked that I I I worked for all this time in 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 a foreign country, and that I had that experience. Is there any like suggestion for you to give like current uh, GMBA students that what what like we need to work on to be like successful businesswoman? I think what you need to do is love what you do. That's good advice that was given to me mm -hmm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very useful because when you like what you're doing, you don't feel like you're working. Yeah. You're just uh, giving the best uh, you can. Yes. And you should find a job or do a business that is fulfilling for, for you that you know you're doing something good yes. and something you're good at and just enjoy. I, I think you, my, my advice is enjoy life. And if you enjoy life, mm -hmm. you will be happy on, on doing what you like. Yeah, true. That's true. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your sharing. And the next question I want to ask is about the, uh, your engineering background. Uh, what's the reason that drives you to switch from the engineering field to the, the finance field? I always wanted to have my, my own business or work in my family's company and, and, and help them. But before that, I think engineering gave me like the structure to do what I wanted. Because when I studied industrial engineering, I focused on processes and everything in life, it's a process mm -hmm. in, in whatever business or field you work, it's a process. And if you understand how to streamline a process, how to make it better, how to make it more efficient, mm -hmm. then you can apply it to any, to any field. And I, I think I'm, I'm very structured person so I'm, I feel comfortable uh, in that that feels I liked it I studied and I worked for um, medical industry that it was the most structured field I think there is uh, in, in the industry because processes can save lives or or not mistakes cannot happen in in such a environment so i think it was a very tough environment that that helped me to practice on this field i switched to finance after going to the gmba mm -hmm. 
uh, because then I, I I said okay now I like numbers I want to see how the world is running where the money comes from there's a lot of politics involved in in banking and I I enjoyed that also very much thank you thank you for your sharing and I would like to ask another question is uh, related to your your current job. After being a project manager at City, uh, what makes you change your career again from the finance field to the sporting goods retail industry? Well, my my dad built this company uh, forty years ago. In some point, I knew I would come here, but I I wanted to do first my own path. And then finish the like the personal goals that I had before. Also, uh, my dad always said uh, uh, he said uh, you should go first to other companies, ruin other companies, not not not. <laughs> and he was always joking about it, and and he was right. I got a lot of experience that I was able to bring to our company i came with fresh ideas or new ways of doing things that i think it it, it could help uh, the company hopefully to go 40 years more or whatever i wanted to be ready to, to be here thank you thank you i want to ask like how you know you are ready back to the family business um well actually i was never completely ready and the first years were very difficult for me because i had no real experience in any of the sporting goods industry so i i had to learn again and maybe i'm still not ready <laughs> <laughs> We keep learning uh, every day and it's a total different thing now because before in in medical industry or finance mm -hmm. I, I it was some it, my my work was focused on on the inside of the company like I didn't have to monitor mm -hmm. competitors mm -hmm or worried about the global situations because my job was inside and here i need to think about all these we we have to monitor how is covid doing in china uh what's happening in europe because we have suppliers there uh we have clients in in the in the whole central america so i need to be very aware of things happening outside our company. Always interesting. <laughs> it's more like taking more responsibility. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, it's it's more responsibility. I always, when I come to the office, I always think, well, there's a hundred families that depends on our decisions, mm -hmm. our actions. So must be very careful. Uh, in what we do. So Lucia, so uh, let's go back to your time in you know, in Taiwan. So what is the biggest culture shock for you uh, when you came to Taiwan? And what is the best memory during GMBA? Uh, my best memories, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the trip we made to to the island, do you remember? Ah, Did you go to the trip? Was Penghu? it Penghu trip? Yeah. It was very, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I cannot say that I that I had a, a, a real cultural shock because well I have Asian background, so I I'm used to a lot of the Asian culture already. So actually for me it was very easy to, to join the Taiwanese culture, I think. I for mm. me it was no 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 terrible shock. Okay. 
when, when I started engineering, I think that was very hard moment in my life with need to, to study so much. And then when, when I finished engineering, I started working. I feel like, oh, <laughs> like, more relaxed. Like I don't, I don't have to, I can sleep. I have the weekends for me. <laughs> so work is easier than study for you. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, well I, I, now that I think about uh, when I was working there, I, a culture shock that I had was that in the working environment, it's not so much about goals. Like, for mm. example, in in Costa Rica, employees are measured by goals, mm. uh, not by um, schedule. Mm. So you have people that is very fast or or can do their job very quick, or mm. and and they. They just go and they have more free time. But I remember uh, in my work experience in Taiwan, even though we we finish the work early and, and we are done with, with our tasks, no one was allowed to leave. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, the boss, that's true. That's, that's true. The that's true. Leave mm. Because it's, it's, it's very not polite to leave before your boss. Mm, and mm. well, that was very interesting for me because I, I never thought about it. Mm, uh, I see, I see. But it was a very important thing in, in, in Taiwan. Yes. Uh, mm, that's true. In many places, yeah. Mm, I see. Yeah. But then, then maybe for current students, you know, now you get involved with the hiring, promoting people in a company a lot. So what are the really important skills you see uh, to when you hire new employees or when you promote, you know, existing employees to the next level? Uh, nowadays, it's everything related to data. It's mm. very important. So all, all the people that can manage good data, that can do programming, that this helps a lot in any field, even in marketing mm. for the marketing analysis. This is something that uh, we are changing the approach of of hiring because everybody needs to be very comfortable and very good at data. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something what, that we look for. So for any kind of a position, even for HR, oh, not, you, not any you, kind because we yeah, we here we have uh, a lot of in from Costa Rica we manage the the marketing and sales mm. and then in costa rica we manage the logistics but in the other countries we we do the logistics with third parties so we need to have people that that can really manage all these situations that arrive uh that i always tell them it's relationships you must build good relationships with uh, your partners, with your mm. customers, with everyone. Because the, the work is easy. The problem mm. is the misunderstandings. There are sometimes uh, mm. when processes are not clear or we need to be flexible to understand that problems will arise and how to deal with them without breaking relationships. So. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that that it's very necessary. That you have to be able to solve problems with diplomacy, mm -hmm. with respect of different cultures. Right. But then, what is your secret weapon to solve problems without hurting relationship? Can you share with the juniors? <laughs> like especially. If your partner is like from the other country or like you cannot see I, each other frequently, how you manage yeah, the, the best thing is to un to really understand the root cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, because for example, to me, some problems come to me 
uh, your point of view with your point of view. So, of course, two different points of view will be opposite. So, what I really try to do is to understand what is really happening and and putting everything in a in a process. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can solve anything, any any kind of problem if you understand what the process is and what part of the process broke and then you can go fix that and and then you must be honest with with the persons or the team uh, this is a mistake we need to do this we need to do that we need to fix this but i think problems come when when you try to solve problems that are not really the problem mm, yeah that's true that's true uh, i what i I, I need to listen to both parts, mm -hmm. but I need to do the re research by myself and to really uh, give a proper answer, a, pre a proper solution. And if it's just, and if it's okay, then nobody is, nobody should have any problems. That, that's mm -hmm. my political way of solving, <laughs> of solving things. You mean you redefine the problem again? That's what you are saying, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's not easy, actually. Yeah, yeah. From your own opinion, uh, not not just hear what they think the problem is, but you find what the real problem is and start mm -hmm. from that. That's true. Yeah, that's really good advice. I mean, which all of us need to actually cultivate. So then maybe, I mean, Lucia, can you give uh, the junior students your two advice? <laughs> well, I hope that you enjoy the time you will be in, in Taiwan doing the GMBA. Um, you don't think about it when you're there because you are tired of uh, studying and stress. But actually, when you look back, it's such a lovely time. Lovely time. <laughs> it's a great opportunity to to learn, to share with other people. So just enjoy and take the most of the time you're there. All the opportunities. Go to every trip. Go to every activity. It it has a me. It has a purpose. It has a meaning and you will have memories that and, and friends hopefully that will last for a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you very much for all the time. We are very grateful. Thank you for you. inviting me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lucia, very much for answering all these questions. They are all very insightful and we really benefit a lot from them. And we are really grateful for having you today. And you have given us a clear overview about your GMBA and career related journey and also your keys to success. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.